Today's lesson is on perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors, and I really cannot emphasize enough how much you need to keep up with your flashcards in this unit. You need to study them every day because there's so much vocabulary here, and it's all new to you. Probably the unit with the most new vocabulary that we have the whole year. So you got to keep up with it. Okay, let's talk about bisectors. A segment ray line or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint is called its perpendicular bisector. A point is equidistant. You've probably heard this word before, but still need to make a card for it. A point is equidistant from two objects if it is the same distance from the objects. The distance from a point to a line is defined as the length of the perpendicular segment. And I'll draw you a sketch so we can see all this here in just a second. Perpendicular segment from the point to a line. So let me let me just see if I can sketch this out for you. So let's, of course, we're talking about triangles here. So let me sketch you a triangle. If I'm talking about a perpendicular bisector, it's perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. So for instance, if I got A, B, C, and I wanted to sketch in here the perpendicular bisector of A, B, then I got to find the midpoint and I got to draw the perpendicular. So that would be a perpendicular segment right there, right? So let's call that D. Let's call that E. So, so ED would be the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay. A point is equidistant from two objects if it is the same distance from the objects. Okay, so with respect to this triangle, I could say that D is equidistant from A and B, right, because I know that this is the perpendicular bisector, therefore I know that D is the same distance from A that it is from D, so that's equidistant. And how about perpendicular distance? The distance from a point to a line as defined is defined as the length of the perpendicular segment. Okay, all that means is, let's say I got a line here, and I got a point out here, point P, and I wanted to know, I asked you, how far is point P from line, let's call this AB. How far is line P from point AB? So what that means is, what is the perpendicular distance from point P to line AB? So I would have to drop a perpendicular there, and this distance, so let's call, let's call this point C. So PC would be the distance the distance from point P to line AB because if you want the distance, it's got to be the perpendicular distance. Otherwise, I could draw an infinite number of segments from P to any point on that line. And how do I know which one to pick? Oh, because we defined it as being the perpendicular distance. Okay, so let's take a theorem here. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Okay, so look at our picture here. Point C, point C is on the perpendicular bisector, right? If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoint. So what this tells me, if CP is the perpendicular bisector, then AC equals BC. That's all that theorem is telling me right there. C is equidistant from A and B. 
Okay, how about the converse? If the point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So, if AD equals DD, in other words, if D is equidistant from A and B, then D is on the perpendicular bisector. Theorem, converse. Okay. How about another theorem, the angle bisector theorem? It says, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the two sides. So let's look at this. So if AD, here's where I am, if AD bisects angle BAC, and how do I know that it bisects? Because I've got my angles marked as congruent, and DB is perpendicular to AB, and DC is perpendicular to AC, then I know that DB equals DC. Okay, and why do I need these statements here, these perpendicular statements? Because you remember just a minute ago when I told you that when we measure the distance from a point to a line, it's got to be the perpendicular distance. Well, that's what that's telling us, okay? So if D, let's see, if a point is on the bisector. So if D is on this bisector, then it's equidistant from the two sides. So if I, so D is on the bisector, I drop a perpendicular to each side of the angle. I know that those two perpendicular segments will be the same length. That's all that's saying. And then of course we have the converse that says if a point in the interior of an angle, so that would be D in this case, is equidistant from the sides of an angle, and here we go, those are marked, then the point is on the bisector of the angle. Got to make flashcards for these and study them or you will have a devil of a time keeping them straight. Okay, so if DB is perpendicular to AB and DC is perpendicular to AC and DB equals DC, then I know that AD bisects angle B, A, C. That's the converse. Okay, let's do a little exercise, a little practice. In the diagram, BE is the perpendicular bisector of AC. Okay, I'm gonna mark it. What segment lengths are equal? Well, of course, I know that AC is equal Wait, what is that? No, that's an E. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's an E. So I know that AE equals CE because that segment is bisected, but I also know that AB is going to be equal to CB, right? Okay, <clears throat> and then it says AP, now they're telling me AP is congruent to CP, so what can I conclude about point P by the previous theorem? OP is on BE. Right? Reread your theorems. That's what that's telling me. If P is equidistant from A and C, then I know that P has to be on the perpendicular bisector. Any point that is on that bisector will be equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. Okay, how about another one? Okay, this is the angle bisector theorem. I can see that I've got perpendicular segments from this point F that is on the angle bisector. How do I know it's an angle bisector? Oh, because my angles are marked. So what do I know? I know that F is equidistant from B and D. So I just got to say 6x plus 3 equals 4x plus 9 
to x equals 6, so x equals 3. Simple as that. Okay, here's some more practice. This is using the angle bisector theorem. So, hey, I'm going to let you pause right here and do these two problems. We'll come back and do the proof, and that'll be it for the day. Okay, so hopefully you were able to use the triangle angle bisector theorem and realize that in this case x equals 7. This one was just a tad bit more complicated because they didn't give us the measures of the two congruent angles. They gave us the measure of one of those, angle 2, and told us the measure of the large angle. So I just plugged in the measure of angle 2 right here. And since it equals the measure of angle 1, I went about it in that fashion. Okay, the only thing left here is a proof. And I started to work it, but I want you to try to work it. Okay, so we're trying to prove the angle bisector theorem. And what does the angle bisector theorem say? It says that if a ray bisects an angle, then any point on that ray is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So what we're trying to show here is that, that S is equidistant from P and R. So probably at some point we're going to have to show that SP is congruent to SR. That's a pretty big little hint I gave you right there. So please try this, guys. Try to do this proof, and we'll go over it at the beginning of class next time. Don't let me forget.